Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 22 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to pour yourself an enormous mug of iced coffee. I will need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear and I'll need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Hey, want to take a second as always and give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over on Patreon. You guys are keeping me in coffee beans and you're also keeping my studio gear up to date, allowing me to deliver the best educational materials possible to you. If you guys have not helped, helped out already, look down in the description. There's a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's learn something new today. You guys, I apologize. I'm kind of getting over a cold and I'm making three or four videos today. My cold is not lasting four weeks. It's just I'm making four videos the day after I have my cold. And so it's not some sort of chronic condition. It's just today is the day that I have off and can make some videos. And so let's jump right in. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the homework that I assigned you, I believe, in lesson number 21. And what that homework was, was to <clears throat> make the following. And that was to interact with a region of in, uh, interest using your mouse. And what so what the assignment was, let me move this cable out of your way. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? Okay, that's pretty good. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry again. Okay, so the assignment was to create a region of in interest using the mouse. The upper left corner is when you push the mouse button down, you then drag, and when you let the mouse button up, it will then display your region of interest as such. Click down, drag, and up, and boom, there it is. Okay, how many of you guys were able to do that? Did anybody do the homework? I hope some of you guys did, or at least I hope some of you tried. So I'm going to go ahead and cue out of that. And then let's jump over and let's open Visual Studio. Okay, and we go to our most excellent OpenCV folder. And then we come up and we click on the plus to add a new a new Python program. And then we are going to call this, let's see, we are going to call this, this is like already open CV program 11. And then we're going to call this ROI underscore copy, copy p and dot pi and the dot pi is kind of important the dot pi is kind of important all right so we come over here and we have a fresh new window now we need to go get our starter program from the most excellent www.toptechboy.com i will get out of your way you can search for the post the search button is here the little green magnifying glass search on webcam on the Jetson nano You'll come up with this code, and this is just the kind of core program that fires off the camera. We developed this in an earlier lesson, so I don't really need to explain it, but right mouse click copy. <clears throat> come over here, and then right mouse click paste. Boom. Okay. Now, if you're on the webcam, I mean, if you are on the uh, Raspberry Pi camera, you need to uncomment out these two lines. Okay. Instead, if you're on the webcam, you would just uncomment out this one line, and it will you will probably be either webcam 0 or webcam 1. All right, so now <coughs> let's just make sure that this is still working right. So I'm going to run Python file and terminal, and there it is. And so I'm going to queue. I'm going to go ahead and do a move window to get it where I want it. So after we show the frame, I'm going to do a C a cv2 dot move window does it like that okay move window what window do i want to move i want to move nano cam and then where do i want to move it i want to move it to zero comma zero all right let's just make sure i didn't break something there okay we're looking good okay so now what we are going to do is 
we are going to create a region of interest based on a mouse event. And so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we are going to need to create a mouse event. And so I think we will do that. Uh, we're going to do that before we create the camera. Okay. Let's see here. We'll just do it before all of this stuff. We'll create our mouse callback. So I'm going to say cv2 dot mouse or cv2 dot set mouse callback. Okay. And then uh, what window do I want to be listening in for a mouse click? I want to be listening in the window nano cam. Okay. And then when I see a mouse click, what program do I want to call? I want to call mouse, mouse, click, mouse, underscore, click. Okay, so when there is a mouse click, I'm going to run mouse click. Okay, now you see that I'm saying I want to listen to NanoCam, but at this point, NanoCam hasn't been defined. That window, it's defined later on. So we need to go ahead and define the window so we don't get an error. So I can just do that with cv2.namedWindow, and then the named window is going to be NanoCam. So now when I create this mouse callback, I am not going to get an error. All right, now, when I see a mouse click in the window NanoCam, I want to run the function mouse click. So I've got to create the function mouse click. So I'm going to come up here towards the top, okay, and I'm going to create that. And I am going to do that by saying define mouse underscore click. So I'm defining that function. There's some parameters that you have to pass. You have to pass it event, and then an X value, a Y value, flags, and parameters. And really what we're going to use is event and uh, X, Y. But you have to put the other ones in there even if you are not going to use them. Okay, it's a function, so we put a colon there, and now we're going to define our function. Well, remember, inside of a function, the variables are local unless you make them global. So we may need to make some global functions so the rest of this Python program will be able to access these values. So we're going to say global, and we're going to say the, var the variables x1, y1, x2, and y2. Because you think that if we're going to define a rectangle, we need an X and a Y for the upper left corner and an X and Y for the bottom right corner. So we need four variables. So I'm going to call it X1, Y1, X2, Y2. <coughs> now we're going to need a flag that will just sort of tell us, you know, whether something has occurred yet or not. And so I'm just going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, I've got my mouse in a strange place. Global, and I'm going to call it the go flag. And what the go flag will, go flag, F-L-A-G. What the glo go flag will be is if you press the button down on the mouse and let it up, then go flag is one, which means now you're ready to go do that creating that extra window with the uh, region of interest in it. Well, if I'm going to do this, I probably need to start with go flag having a value. So I'm going to say go flag, go flag, go flag is equal to zero, meaning that at the start of the program, a mouse click hasn't occurred yet. So when I get down in that while loop, it doesn't get confused. It knows that go flag is zero and that it shouldn't actually fire up that uh, that copied window. I think this will make sense as we go through it. Okay, so now we have set up our global variables in our function. Now we need to first see, have I pressed the mouse button down? Okay, have I pressed the mouse button down? So I'll say if event equal equal cv2 dot event and then event should be spelled right e event okay 
And the event that I'm looking for is L button down as such. What do I want to do if uh, the left button has been set down? Well, I want to say that x1 is equal to x. And I want to say y1 is equal to y. So I'm putting those x and y values of the mouse click into my global variables so I can have them in the rest of the program. And then uh, what I'm going to do is the button hasn't come up yet, so I want go flag to stay set at zero. We well, might say go flag is already at zero. Yeah, but imagine that I defined one region of interest, and now the second time through when I click the button down, I want to reset go flag to zero because I'm kind of starting over. I think as we go through this, this will make more sense. Okay, that should be good. Now, <coughs> that gets that first point, which is the upper left of the region of interest. Now I need to get the lower right of the region of interest. Well, I'm going to click I've got the upper left, I'm going to drag, and then I'm going to release. And when I release, I need to get the lower right coordinate. So I'm going to have another event if event equal equal cv2 dot event. And now it's still going to be event underscore l button up. Okay. L button up. What do I want to do if L button is up? Well, I want to say that X2 is equal to X, and then I want to say Y2 is equal to Y. So this is going to be the coordinates of the bottom right of that rectangle I'm going to define as my region of interest. And now, since I have both coordinates, I want to go. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say go flag is equal to 1. All right, now that's what I need to do in my mouse event. Now I need to come down inside of my while loop. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I think all that looks pretty good. We come down inside the while loop now. So give me just a second to get over there. Okay. So now what we do in the while loop is we read a frame and show a frame, but between reading and showing is that magic place that we sit. And if what? If go flag equal equal one, that means I'm just going to sit and I'm going to grab a picture, show a picture, grab a frame, show a frame, do that until what? Until the button has been pressed on the mouse, the drag has occurred, and the button comes up. Once the button comes up, then it's go time. So if go flag is equal to one, then what I want to do is I want to create my frame. Uh, my frame is going to be equal, or I'm going to create my rectangle on my frame. So frame is equal to cv2.rectangle, and then where do I want to put it? on? I want to put the, the rectangle on frame, and then where do I want to put it? Well, I want to put it on the tuple x1 comma y1 and then I want to put it on the tuple x2 comma y2 <coughs> so that will be a rectangle from the upper left to the lower right and then let's make it oh let's make it blue so 255 comma 0 comma 0 that tuple gives the color and then let's make it a thickness of 3 That'll put the rectangle there over my region of interest. Then what I want to do is I want to grab the region of interest. So I'm going to say ROI is equal to frame. Okay. And then the frame, I'm going to go. Now on this frame, when I put those brackets by frame, I am treating frame my image now as a matrix or as a two-dimensional array that has rows and that has columns. So it's the range of rows, comma, the range of columns. This is where it's real tricky. Rows are kind of like in my coordinate world what I call Y, and columns in my coordinate world is what I call X. And so it's one of those tricky things. What we're calling Y actually comes first, because in matrices it is always rows first. It's rows by columns. 
Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, so I am going to get my ROI's frame, and where do I want to go? I want to go from Y1, the row Y1, through the row Y2. So it will be Y1 colon Y2 will take that region, and then similarly my columns will be X1 comma comma X2. All right. So now I've grabbed a little region of interest from the main image. Okay. Now, what do I want to do? If I can find where I am here, what do I want to do? I have a region of interest. Now I want to show it. So I'll do a CV2.IM show. Okay. And then I am going to show, I'll call this window copy ROI. And then what I will do is I will put it at 705, or I will put it at, uh, I'm sorry, what I want to show is ROI. So the window is going to be called copy of ROI. And what I'm going to put in that window is the image ROI. Okay. Let me just say, you might say, well, when I did the ROI this time, why did I not do a dot copy because I don't need a separate copy. I can just grab what's already there. I don't need to save it differently. If I was changing the original frame, then I would need to do the dot copy. But because I'm not changing the original image, I don't have to do a dot copy. Okay. So uh, now let's do a move window so this won't be on top of or underneath the other one. So I'll do a CV2 dot move. <clears throat> window and what window do I want to move? I want to move copy ROI and then where do I want to move it? Well the other window is 640 and what I found is is that the other window is 640 we need to move over by about 705 over and then we don't need to go down any so we'll leave it at zero and that should make it kind of in a nice spot. All right, let's run this thing and see what happens. So right mouse click run Python file in terminal. Oh, line one. What is this? CV2 is not defined. Okay, you know what happens sometimes is perhaps when I ran it from the terminal, uh, that confused it a little bit. So if you get an error on line one, sometimes it is best to just kill uh, Visual Studio, okay? And then open it again. Okay, so we are going to open it here. Okay, and it looks like it started up with the same program I had before, so we will run file in terminal. It looks happy. All right, there it is. Now I'm going to select my region of interest, so I will come here, left mouse button down, drag, left mouse button up. Oh, and it didn't like it. Tuple is not callable. Okay, that did not like... Uh, my frame is CV2 rectangle. So what did I do there? Where was that? Let's see, what was that? I'm a little confused here. <coughs> Line 31. Okay. Frame is equal to cv2.rectangle. That looks good, comma, frame. Uh, let's see, did I forget? Oh, I forgot a comma there. Did you guys see that? Forgot my comma. Now let's try it. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Okay. Now I'm going to right or left mouse button down drag left mouse button up and didn't like it again let's see what happened it says ROI 
okay doesn't like my ROI y1 to y2 oh did you guys catch that colon so the range is given with a colon I want the range y1 to y2 those are my rows comma x1 colon x2 those are my columns so let's run Python file in terminal okay left mouse button down drag left mouse button up boom all right we got it there okay we got it so you can see that we can get our region of interest we can drag over it we can get our region of interest and drag over it or sometimes our program just freezes let's see where are we okay let's try running it again not sure why that froze up at the time okay left button down drag left button up all right let's see if i can get my nice little longhorn logo all right there it is boom okay so <coughs> what we've learned to do today is we have learned to select a region of interest using the mouse so we're kind of like using mouse events and regions of interest so we can interact with our scene and those types of features will be very helpful later on okay so the magic word for you guys that have gone through the whole video and want to show me you've gone through the whole video the magic word for today is banana plantation this is a picture of my dream has finally been achieved I have planted a little banana plantation but it's actually kind of a special one you know that uh, vanilla beans sell for like three hundred dollars a pound and I'm trying to see if there's a way to develop a sustainable agricultural system in Africa and one of the challenges is <clears throat> When you're in Africa, there's a lot of high-value crops, but an indigenous farmer would starve to death before the high-value crop produced. So you see here, what I've got is I have got, uh, I've got vanilla beans that are planted between banana trees. The banana trees will produce in like six to nine months. So the indigenous farmer very quickly can be making money by selling bananas. In the meantime, the banana trees are shading the vanilla. The vanilla take about three years to produce. The farmer can survive on bananas while he's waiting for the va vanilla, vanilla to produce. And then when the vanilla starts producing, it's just cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. <coughs> now, also what I'm thinking, though, is after that, vanilla, uh, bananas are kind of low-value crop. So what if we had a high-value crop to shade the vanilla instead of banana so the bananas grow they shade the vanilla and then when the vanilla starts producing what we have also planted in here are macadamia nut trees those will take five to seven years to produce but those macadamia nuts sell for about twenty dollars a pound okay so you see macadamia nuts are very valuable so this is the grand scheme of things the bananas will initially grow very quickly provide sustenance for the farmer as his vanilla grows and the banana trees will provide shade for the vanilla and as the vanilla is growing and the banana trees are providing shade slower growing uh, macadamia nut trees are also planted in here so in like five to ten years this thing should just be a money-making machine because the vanilla and the macadamia nuts should play very well together Give me your thoughts down below or at least indicate that you've stuck with me throughout the whole video by putting vanilla plantation in a comment. Okay, guys, this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. Again, I really appreciate you guys that are helping me out on Patreon. If you aren't helping yet, think about clicking, going over, and giving me a little help. Really appreciate the comments from you guys. Think about subscribing to the channel. Think about sharing this with someone else. I will talk to you guys later.